So I'm curious. So we've never played together before. No. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> it's fun to do. Um, I'm kind of curious what, like, how you relate to, um, I guess, like, fast language like this or whatever. Like, when mm-hmm. you have a very dense sort of timbral and, and gestural language. Like, mm-hmm. what, what do you... How do you negotiate that, like, over time? Over, like, formal time? Yeah, yeah but maybe, like, the medium. Mm-hmm. Like, not necessarily, like, the whole performance, but let's say, like, in, like, 15-second chunks or something like that. Right, yeah. Um, probably not very consciously at the level of gesture when it's, when, when it's really dense like that. Mm-hmm. It's, um, I guess it's, it's more at the level of kind of intertwining textures and kind of what, what the overall thing feels like you know, between all the sounds that are coming in so this this sort of little ecology here most commonly gets used with with two other laptopers who are also quite busy um, mm. and actually the first time this came out particularly the first time this came out um was when um i'd bagged myself a gig with Daniel Carter, who's like this really sort of fast sax and keys player from New, from New York, who I'd never played with before. And I sort of listened to some of his stuff and he's all, I said, I'm going to need something to sort of try and keep up. And finding something ticklish like that. Um, and with that, it is that kind of, the only way I could hang on, I guess, was with the sense mm. of, of shifting texture rather than trying to keep up with, um, I guess the notion of individual phrases or even less, I mean, with some of the stuff we had there, it felt like there was at least moments of call and response that coalesced, yeah, yeah. And coalesced into little bubbles of gesture. But mm. there was a, there was definitely a kind of fusion in my ears for yeah, most yeah. of it, I think. Um, so I wasn't consciously, for example, trying to get away from the textures you were making. No, no, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, for me it's interesting because like, I tend to sort of like this hyperactive gestural stuff and mm-hmm. here we, I think, locked in quite well and there were some interesting moments of that. And I, I guess the reason I asked, and, and one of the things that I find curious, uh, that's a terrible word for this, but um, like when you're in a, a freer and improvised context, mm-hmm. moments of synchronicity are rare. Mm-hmm. So like like events where like, let's say like two pitches line up or like yeah. things like this happen. So there's like a magnetic draw, I think almost automatically. So we're both doing stuff and then like if we both stop, it has like a, a, a very... Um, meaningful impact yeah, yeah which is it, it's kind of arbitrary because we both like happen to stop our micro phrases at that time yeah which makes kind of like a macro stop mm. but at least for me as a as a performer slash listener that sort of makes me take a pause and like like okay this is unusual it's happened let me l- let that do yeah its thing. yeah yeah and it's always it's a comforting feeling if like you've hit one of those pauses and you've both noticed it and I guess drawing it out for a little bit more mm. signals to your co-player that yeah I've noticed it oh, I'm listening to it oh. <laughs> yeah. I feel so seen yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all that sort of thing where sometimes you know um, particularly I guess in larger group settings you know you might you might think oh right here's a moment to step back and mm. like <laughs> no one else does or something and like, or it never thins out or, or something like that so it's 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 a really useful anchor, I think. I mean, it's really hard to start again at the same time, but I guess that's yeah, yeah. that's grade eight improvising. Also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was, yeah, I really enjoyed those moments. And then, like, sort of as we got towards the end, it felt like we had more simultaneous um, types of languages happening, which I think also works in kind of like a deconstructive way where some of these um, ideas sort of played out. I had a unrelated and, and not so much a question, but... Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of the teeth on my comb broke. Oh no! Midway through, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that because you were getting so into it? As a yeah, I, w- I was playing because at some point I, I went sort of acoustic, so I, I killed the mic and I was just playing acoustically with you, but still trying to match the the, the volume level. So I was I was hitting it pretty hard, but I guess uh, a, a bit too hard. So yeah. we'll see how this goes. Do you use the long sprongs as well? I do a bit um, more for delicate. like uh, th- this kind of like plucky. Right. I, I didn't rosin them today, so they're not as plucky as they are, but they're good for like like these sort of grab textures um but yeah i hope i i do have spares of a bunch of these but it, it's it's tricky because the um the combs that i found sound the best are the shittest combs so like they're hard to find like this one i think was just from a pound shop like in the bottom where i was like oh is this any good and it was like the best <laughs> so I'm, I'm, i hope i have a spare of this one uh but yeah that's unrelated but um it's something that kind of happened in the middle well i guess on the subject of your of your various bits because i wasn't Paying sort of much ocular attention to, mm. to you, yeah, but 
I really like the way that you had little blossoms of pitch mm. come out of your thing because there we were in this quite scratchy language, but it's it's great that you you can reach for it. I guess, yeah, yeah. I guess in that way. Um, whereas one of the problems of with this stuff is you can easily get yourself into a territory where you're you're several knob presses away from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, with with this, I particularly sense it, it's it's a uh, while I'm doing these kind of scratchy things, everything is so heavy and, and timbre. <laughs> it's flavor of that. Like when you have something that's pseudo sine wavy or, or something like a pure pitch or something it like cuts through yeah. in like a very powerful way so i did use a bit of that and then in the patch i have a couple of things where like sustainy um bells can sound you know on the playing too and i yeah i find those to be quite um like a bit of you know something bright while you're eating something fatty you know yeah, it's like yeah. it just kind yeah. of like in there a bit just... of lemon juice and yeah yeah <laughs> right in the eyes because <laughs> obviously i have heard this patch before I mean, i'm not i don't know how consciously i was Hmm. kind of anticipating the sort of sound world that, that I mean obviously when I saw you play it you had a, a fuller kit because it yeah, was yeah. a bass drum and what have you yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean that that's not an unusual sound world for me uh, hmm. at, at all with this stuff because it's it's the most easily grabbed for thing if you put that DPA in your mouth and then shove it through a granulator that's pretty much where it's going to take yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, with this one, I, I, um, I wanted to have some, because it has a patch that have the core of the sort of textury thing and mm -hmm. a couple of effects here. And so I'm essentially using that more than, I mean, I did use some of the bell stuff from, from mm -hmm. the Kaiser Snare thing, but more just as an anchor to have the, the cross mm. textury things going here. Although because in this setup, I, I don't have the same feedbacky uh, pitchiness that I can get to oh, just yeah. because of the room. And yeah, yeah. That, that takes a lot of tune. Um, yeah, I specifically wanted to have something like that because I, I had a, 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 sen a notion that like you would have this kind of language and I wanted to be there with you because I, I know I can be with with the, even though it's electronic, it's largely just distortion and a microphone mm. and, and a, a volume knob essentially. So that, that's the sort of 80 to 90% of, of what I was doing. Right, there. so it's the, fade, the faders take you in and out of Yeah, so it's essentially then, like... So it's just that, but um, it's just sort of set up with a, 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 a crossfade, like a very aggressive crossfade, so you can do a lot of like turntable right. technique things. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it is just the angle. You know, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and when you bring things in now. So it, there's a lot of language just with that, that was the bulk of what I did. And then the combs obviously do their, their fun stuff, which I should give a, give a little rosin tickle while, <laughs> while we're talking, just to freshen them up. I do... Um, I guess that's uh, something I got to talk to comb makers. They got to, I need shitter combs that can yeah. hold on to rosin better. Like bespoke. Is there not already a market for musical combs out there? Not that I'm, I don't yeah. know. Actually, I haven't seen, like, I, I got this idea of cutting them as a curve with, um, I forgot his name, Tom Nunn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does, like, those scratch box things. Mm -hmm. And um, in some video, he kind of shows this curvy comb thing. And it's super useful because then you get, like, Right. You know, like all those pitches and then yeah. the angle of it also works very good for right. like kind of doing gestures. Amazing. It hadn't occurred to me that you'd need to wasn't them, but of course yeah. Um I mean it helps a lot like for, yeah. for well, I don't know if it will do it now, but um you it makes a massive difference in terms of just getting pure pitches like, mm. like yeah. without the rosin it, it won't do that. I mean you can do like all of like that yeah. kind of stuff with with without it, but it, yeah. it does just grab a little getting bit more. it to sing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the same with the cardboard, obviously. When yeah, you're, yeah. When you're that. <clears throat> yeah, you're an, another odd object Boeing aficionado, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, should we play a bit more? Yeah, let's do it, man. Cool.
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.